In this video, we're going to see how to make an autocomplete widget on an HTML form by using jQuery and c .net in Visual Studio 2017. Here's a quick look at the finished product. We have an input field where a user can enter some data. Notice if I start typing OAK, it gives me a list of oaks back. If I start typing, let's say, B-U-R-R, -R, it gives me the bur oak and it allows me to autocomplete. This saves the user from typing the entire word, and it also helps to give suggestions, which reduces the chance of a user mistyping or giving some spelling errors. So let's start with our Visual Studio project. I have one that I've loaded here, and we'll start by creating a simple HTML page. You could do an HTML page or an ASPX page either way. I'm going to do HTML just to make it, uh, frankly, a little bit simple, a little bit straightforward. So we'll call this one Enter Plants, just like so. And so we create our page, and here we go, very simple page. I'm going to go to Toolbox, and I'm just going to drop on maybe, and this is just HTML, uh, so I'll drop on an input text field. A little tricky getting that in the right place because we want that to be within body. So I put in an input text field, there we go. And perhaps we can put in a label or something like that. Uh, we could also put in a button, several things we could add here. But uh, nonetheless, we'll go ahead and grab a submit button. We're not actually going to submit anything. All we're doing is making this autocomplete. So I'll say plant name, just like so. And then let's give this input ID, uh, we'll say plant underscore name, just like so. Type equals text. Uh, that's good for now. And save. And just a quick gut check to make sure that it looks good. We'll do a quick view in browser. And yeah, nothing fancy, but nonetheless, we see plant name. If I start typing right now, nothing appears. Okay, so the next part is that we want to add this jQuery library, which is half the story. So jQuery, a, a rich JavaScript and CSS library that you can use to make web pages and web forms user-friendly. So this one we have an autocomplete. I can type the letter C and you see the programming languages that have C in them appear. I can type O and you see that limits it down to COBOL and Cold Fusion. So to implement this, we're going to do it in a couple steps. I'm going to go to View Source. A few things that I need. I need the jQuery uh, source stuff, which I'm going to import here by using a link. You can either have it locally or you can use a link. So if it's linked, we need to put it up in the head section. So I'll simply paste just like so. Now we'll navigate back to our jQuery window. And um, I'm going to grab this script function here and copy. And we'll navigate back quickly to Visual Studio. And I'm going to put that script function, the script concept, we'll put it also in the head section. Now take a look at what's going on here. We have some kind of function, and we're not really worried about all the symbols here because it frankly just works pretty well. But what you'll notice is that it gives us this predefined list of options. And that's great if that's all you need. If you're looking at something like the 50 states, you could probably put them right here in your HTML page. But when you start to get to a larger data set, or even a dynamic data set, one that's going to change, you probably don't want to hard code it and have it static like this. You want it to come from a data feed, and that'll be the second part of our video. Uh, but to try things out, we'll go ahead and try it as it is. Uh, everything here looks good, but one thing we do need to change. Look at line number 36, and you see, see a hash symbol. If you're familiar with cascading style sheets, or HTML, or even JavaScript, you might recognize that as the identifier for an ID attribute of the input, or in this case of the input tag. So we need to change this slash tags. We need to make it match this input ID that we put down here in our plant name input field. Uh, so I'm just going to grab that and make sure I don't uh, do a typo. I will paste like so and save. And now let's go refresh our form and see what it looks like. Once again, I type C and I type O, and there we go. Again, if you're dealing with a smaller data set, maybe that's all that you need. Uh, but we do want to consider how to feed this data from a dynamic data set. Okay, for that, we need to make a subtle change. First of all, we need to change our source, and that source needs to hit a live JSON stream. Okay, for that, we're going to need, guess what, a live JSON stream. So let's create, create that as part of our ASPX project. I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose add and I'm going to choose web form, which might seem a little bit silly right now because we want a JSON feed, not a web form, but hang tight. We'll see where this is going in just a moment. So I'll call this auto complete, uh, we'll say 
plants, autocomplete plants to work for us, and we'll choose OK. Now, this by default is going to give us an ASPX page with a code behind. So I go to my autocomplete plants, I expand, and we see this code behind right here. Uh, so this is essentially the controller, or what's going to handle any events for this page. One of the first things that we're going to see is a page load method, and this method is invoked when the page is loaded. So by default, when we load the page, it's going to give us a bit of HTML uh, that's generated. And let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So you see empty page right now, control U shows us the source. And you see it gives us a bit of stuff that we didn't type, but Visual Studio C Sharp.net has given us. If you're familiar with JSON, you'll know this is not JSON look and feel. This is HTML, a different format. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to say, OK, don't give us that HTML stuff. So I'm going to say response dot clear. And then I'm going to say change the content type, which is what tells the browser what it should expect to receive. So response dot content type equals. Now careful here because we have to type this just perfectly. So application slash JSON space, uh, sorry, semicolon, car set equals UTF dash eight, and then terminate with the semicolon. Okay, and now we're going to say response dot end, and that essentially says, okay, I'm all done. Thank you very much. Now in between these, we have to write some kind of JSON. So I'll say, we'll just so go ahead and say flush output. So so what I'll do is I'll say response dot write and we'll say double quote and we'll say curly foo uh, colon bar. Uh, just like so. Now the trick is that's not perfect JSON because uh, we should maybe put something between you. We should put some quotes here uh, to do, to uh, uh, for the bar for the value, but we do have something now. Of course, we're not done yet. We have more things we need to do, but at this point, we at least have a starting point. So uh, I'm going to now view this in the browser, and let's just make sure that what we have so far uh, looks reasonable. So go to my browser, and you see foo bar, control U, and you see once again foo bar, uh, just to make sure this is legit JSON viewer, and let's make sure that this parses this JSON. We we'll go to our viewer. Yep, it parses this JSON, no problem. So we're properly sending JSON. Okay, but this is a kind of goofy syntax, right? Let's think of another way we can do this. Let's think in more natural terms. I'm going to create a list of strings, just like so, and we'll say uh, suggestions equals new list, and then string again, and uh, like so. Okay, now suggestions. These are the things that we want to autocomplete. Suggestions.add, and we'll say burr oak, and I'll just add a few of these. I'll do a bit of copy and paste to speed things up. We have some sample data now. Now, this is not yet JSON. Let me go ahead and put a comment so we remember what this is. Our suggested data. This is not yet JSON. If we did a response right here, it would not make any sense. So what we need to do is convert this list to JSON. And for that, we can use something called J JSON convert and then serialize object. And we'll pass into that our suggestions list. Okay, so uh, we see it looks good so far, but we do have a red line. We know we need to stop when we have a red line. And for this, it says, I don't know what JSON convert is. So I'm going to choose the first option uh, using Newtonsoft JSON, which is an external library that I've imported. I imported that in a previous video, but if you're curious how I did it, right click on the project, manage nugget package, and it's usually actually one of the first to come up. But if not, just search for newtonsoft.json. Uh, that'll add that to your project. Uh, and then you're in good shape. So uh, JSON convert serialize object looks at that object and makes JSON out of it and returns that JSON as a string. So we'll say response JSON equals JSON convert just like so. Now I'm going to take this JSON convert variable and I'm going to put that into my response right. And let's see what it generates this time. We take a look again and uh, just to make sure this is JSON, it's a square bracket and then comma separated list, which typically represents a JSON array. So JSON viewer again, let's make sure that this parses properly. We go to viewer and sure enough, we see it's a JSON feed. Okay, 
now we're in a bit better shape. Remember that this is in an ASPX called autocomplete plans.aspx. Given that, let's go back to the uh, interplans page we were working on earlier. We no longer need this hard-coded array here of available tags because we know we're getting it from a dynamic source. Now, because of that, it chops down that autocomplete very, very easily. It makes it very simple, just about, you know, about five lines of code. So the source, here's an important uh, thing that's not very obvious. You see how source is currently available tags, and that was the name of that array that we just got rid of. Notice that source available tags is not in quotes. In that case, jQuery assumes that that is a local variable, a local JavaScript variable. But as soon as we put it in quotes, jQuery assumes that it is not a variable, but instead it's a URL or an endpoint. So in our case, we're going to change this to auto complete plants.aspx and save. By nature of being in quotes, it's going to say, OK, I'm going to go look for this thing called autocomplete plants. And with that, let's take a look and see how this one looks now. OK, so we have our plant name, and I'm going to type in oak. Oh, look at that. There are my oaks. But notice something funny. If I keep typing oak leaf, notice that it doesn't select oak leaf hydrangea. It's still showing us all of the names. So at this point, we do have validation that at least we're getting our JSON stream over to the autocomplete, but we don't see it reducing as we're typing. So we need to work on that next. Now, that's another little caveat that's not very obvious if you're just looking at this. If there are no quotes here and it's using a local JavaScript variable, jQuery will automatically handle that filtering as the user is typing. However, uh, if it's in quotes and jQuery knows that, hey, this is a URL that I'm hitting, it will not do that filtering. It assumes that the endpoint or the URL that it's hitting will do the filtering for it. So let's go back and do that filtering. What we'll notice is that jQuery will pass the letters the user has typed in a query parameter called term. So we need to get access to that query parameter. We'll say, what did the user type? And we'll say string, and then term, uh, square brackets, and then term, lowercase term works. And we'll save that to a string, just like so. Now what we can do is we can uh, use that term to filter. Filter the collection by term. So let's make another collection, list string, and we'll call it filtered results equals new list string. Terminate with a semicolon. And now what we'll do is we'll iterate over, uh, iterate over the, the list of all terms and find only those that have a match. So let's say for each, and then we'll say string uh, plant in suggestions. So careful here, there. Notice I'm using suggestions, which is the full list of all suggestions. And now inside of this, I'm going to say if plant.contains, and we'll say term. Now what's going on here? Well, in our loop, we're iterating over suggestions and we're shaking hands with every constituent of this collection. As we're shaking hands with each one, we're putting it into this local variable called plant, and then we're simply saying, does the plant contain the search term that the user entered, which is those letters that the user entered? If so, let's go ahead. Let's say, if the plant contains the user's key presses, add it to the filtered results list. That's easy to do. We say filtered results dot add, and then we say plant. And now we simply need to change this last variable uh, from changing the full list of all plants to JSON. We need to change it so that it, it converts the filtered list of plants to JSON. So filtered results, and just like so, and save. And now with that, uh, now we go ahead and write that output, and then we finish up. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look again at our interplants page. And let's watch this work. So I'm going to type oak, O-A-K, notice that all appear. Now I'm going to type leaf, and notice that it filters down to leaf. I can type in B-U-R-R, -R, and you see it automatically filters to just bur oak, W-H-I-T, and you see it filters to white oak. 
So two more changes, and then let's look at the debugger. First of all, what if term is empty? We want to uh, cover that scenario. So let's just wrap this filter with an if test. Uh, we'll say if uh, term not equal null. Uh, that should work, but we'll also say and term length greater than zero. So make sure that we've got a legitimate uh, letter. And then we'll simply wrap this entire unit and the open close curly uh, and indent, make it look a little more clean. And on the HTML page, I'm going to add one more attribute. So I'm going to put a comma after my source and I'm going to say min length uh, colon three. That means don't start the autocomplete until the user has typed at least three letters. Good idea to put in a min length if you're dealing with a large data set. I'm going to na navigate back to the code behind as well and I'm going to snap a breakpoint. Uh, right around the top, and I've already started this in the debugger, so hopefully we'll be able to take a quick look here and see what happens. So we'll go to my page and I'll start typing B. Nothing happens. We don't see the debugger. U, R, and as soon as I hit that R, you see the breakpoint hits and it gives me focus back on Visual Studio. So let's walk over this one line at a time. We see the term is BUR. Uh, we go ahead and clear out the uh, request and the like. Now we're going to create our collection of all possible suggestions. And many times this would come from a database or maybe a JSON feed from somewhere else, but nonetheless, just dummied it up right here so we could see it like so. We make our filtered results. Now, uh, let's take a look. Is, uh, is the plant burr oak? Okay, so the first person we're shaking hands with is burr oak. Now, if we take a look at this plant burr oak and we look at the term B-U-R, does burr oak contain B-U-R? Well, sure enough, it does. And so we add that to our filtered results. Now we shake hands with the next plant. And what's the next plant? Next plant is white oak. Does white oak contain B-U-R? It does not, so it skips the filtered results. You'll get the hang of this pretty quickly. You probably already have. Red oak, does that contain B-U-R? No, it does not. So we skip over that. And none of the other suggestions that I have contain B-U-R. So it, go, it goes ahead and it writes our response JSON, which in this case is just one thing burr oak. And then it says in. Now one trick here, because I've tabbed away, uh, the autocomplete dropdown has gone away by the time we get focused back on our page. But nonetheless, we see under the covers how that term concept works. So I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.